<clears throat> Here's a look at the setup for my jet engine right now. Oh, look at the jet itself tied down. And a few sensors here running off of an Arduino Uno. It's kind of measuring temperature and pressure. And there's a tachometer here, but I broke it last minute. One of the legs of the laser sensor has snapped off. Oh. Okay, yeah. So that's out of order for now. Over here we have the fuel supply. Uh, natural gas, or well, the camping gas canisters is being used to preheat. And then later on, um, a liquid fuel will be used, for example, um, methanol, which will be delivered through a pressurized sort of like siphon system. You can see the regulator and the air supply will be hooked up through here, through the regulator. Um, and a needle valve is used to control the fuel flow. As seen here.
Okay, so I just performed the test on this jet engine. It's not really an engine so far. And now we're going to disassemble it and see what's going on. Here we have two outlets on the, the top cowl for the compressor. This copper tube is for fuel and this here is an outlet to measure air pressure. It's held on to the diffuser underneath by these two screws, which we'll undo now. Okay, so before removing this, I'm just going to remove this tape here. This tape on the on the fuel tube is just to act as sort of like a seal. So I've got to remove this. The reason being is this copper tube simply comes through the cowl here. It's not actually bonded to this, so we need to first remove this obstruction before we're able to slide this cowl off. So, just move off this clip. This clip acts as like a basic seal between this cowl and the casing itself. And I've just put some, um, what's it called? Some plumbing tape underneath to act as like a seating. I should be able to just pull this off, maybe with a bit of effort. We have it off now, and I'm just going to remove it. It wants to come out. Okay, here we go. Okay, now it's off. Let me see the, dis the diffuser and the compressor wheel here. So, this wheel was from one of those cheap turbos that you can get off AliExpress. It's just a rotor turbo. This diffuser here, um, I designed it myself and 3D printed it and then manufactured it in aluminium using a sand casting process. Um, in terms of the design, I am not an aerodynamicist, so I sort of just eyeballed it and um, it's a qualitative, like it looks like it works, so hopefully it works. A uh, bit of a job. In terms of these surfaces, I was able to machine them on a lathe, so these should be decently flat, um, although it really isn't necessary. And this would be a much better uh, item to be produced on a mill, in fact, but I don't have a mill. So, that's that. Anyways, um, next we're going to remove the bottom three screws which hold the rest of the assembly to the casing. This entire casing thing just it slides off of the rest of the assembly, including the bearing housing. Um, ah, I won't bother explaining it, you'll see in a sec. Okay. On one of these screws there's some black residue. So, we'll see what that's about in a bit. This entire casing just slides off. Okay. Hmm. Looks quite clean in there, so that's, that's good. Um, yeah, actually, this is quite interesting. If you look in here... Uh, would you be able to see those stains? I think those might be from the alcohol uh, evaporating off the bottom of the can, which is not a good sign because that means it's not evaporating fully, it's dripping down into the can. Anyways, we'll investigate this a bit more. Um, here we have the rest of the assembly. Um, essentially, it consists of the combustion chamber here, which leads into the stator before being readapted into the turbine, which is mechanically linked to the compressor. Classic jet engine design. Anyways, next, before we can disassemble anything else, we're going to have to remove the two nuts on either end of the rotor. Once that's removed, all hell breaks loose. So... Only one of them will come undone, because once one is um, loose, the other one will no longer receive any torque. Um, so it appears this time, the compressor nut is fallen off first. So we'll just take this off to the side. This is what the assembly is like. So underneath this nut, there is a stack of various components, which ultimately seats onto the, the rigid steel shaft. So the shaft was machined from a solid bar. It's just regular machinable steel. I'm not actually too sure about the grade. 
and in here you'll be able to see the bearing which is a ceramic hybrid bearing quite nice anyways um, before we disassemble this any further if you'll just have a look at this fuel delivery system here it's essentially a relatively small di diameter copper tube which comes through the turbine cowl, sorry, the, the compressor cowl, um, which we've already removed. And it comes down through just in the space between the casing and the turbine, uh, the combustion chamber, before it makes a loop around here. And there's several uh, needle heads, surgical needle heads, that have been silver soldered onto the copper tube. And these just rest here, and they're, they're held on by the friction between this copper tube and the, the cowling once it's installed. Although it's currently not, and so it's just loose, just jiggling around here. Anyways, let's continue disassembling this. In order to do so, I'm going to get a grip on the turbine. <clears throat> okay, we're back now. My phone just ran out of battery earlier. So, um, we've just removed the turbine. And the turbine is seated on the shaft in here, which, if my camera will focus, you'll be able to see <clears throat> it is held in the correct position with this spacer, which holds it a small distance away from this stator in here, so that it's free to rotate. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but in case you're not familiar with the operation principle of this jet engine, or any jet engine in general, is first, a compressor is used to increase the pressure of air and also force a large volume of air into the casing of the jet engine. And so in this case, the turbine, oh sorry, no, the, the compressor that used to live on top of this shaft is performing that function. And as it rotates, it pushes air into this diffuser which converts a part of the kinetic energy of the air that is being blown through into pressure, so potential energy. And once it enters, um, once it exits the diffuser through these channels here, it instead enters into the casing. Um, and there's a region, so the casing is five millimeters above this uh, combustion chamber. It sits tangent to this face here. And once it enters into this region, it begins it begins to diffuse into the combustion chamber. This combustion chamber is, um, if you took a cross section of it, so if you cut it like that, it'll look like a donut. What happens here is fuel is injected from here into the front end of this combustion chamber, and there it gets um, gets lit on fire, obviously. And um, initially, the oxygen flow is constricted because as you see, there's only a small amount of relatively small holes here. And this is where the flame front is, just beyond these small um, primary holes, is I think what they're called in the industry or whatever. And then as the flame front and the hot gases continue to travel along this tube, um, some slightly larger holes, progressively larger in fact, the holes let more and more air in, um, which completes the burn. And finally, these large holes dilute the hot gases um, before they enter the turbine section. And so you'll see in this turbine section, um, the tube which the gases are forced to travel along constricts significantly, thereby converting a large amount of the thermal and also uh, potential energy um, in the form of the fact that the gas is now increased in temperature after being um, after being heated by the fuel. And also it's pressurized from the initial uh, compressor, will travel through the turbine and this will act as a nozzle, which increases the gas's velocity for it to do work on the turbine itself. And the turbine is what drives the compressor. So the process is suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. Such a cliche thing, but like it, it's pretty much how it works. And also this wasn't mentioned earlier either. Um, there's three nuts here, which were welded onto this cowl. This cowl is separate from the combustion chamber, which I'll show you in a second. Um, these are what the screws earlier, the screws that I've seen from outside the engine, they screw through through this hole and into this nut here. Oh, if we focus, they screw through into here and hold this entire assembly centered in the casing. And so this actually gives us some clues to why there's this black residue on here. And I think that's because 
this was the screw that was resting on the bottom and hence there was probably a pool of um, methanol that had gathered up and um, due to incomplete combustion it's probably left some sort of organic compound not too sure exactly what it is though anyways from here in order to further disassemble the engine um, what needs to be done is this entire cowl section the stator and also turbine cowl is unscrewed and so in order to do this just apply a torque. I have to be careful to ensure there's some clearance between the fuel tube and the diffuser, otherwise it'll catch and probably get damaged. I'll have to go out of camera for a sec, just so I have a bit more room. Okay, there we go. So admittedly, this design is a bit janky, um, but it works, and um, my current design doesn't really allow me to accommodate for any changes so it'll be it'll be as it is right now the only issue with this design is just it's a bit difficult to assemble and disassemble the engine it doesn't really have any functional difference so as we unscrew this we'll be able to withdraw the inner bearing mount um, the bearing facing oh, and everything essentially falls apart so you'll see over here I've just removed the cowl a look at that. This cowl mates with the combustion chamber and also you'll see that the bearing is now loose. This bearing used to live in this aluminum um, section <clears throat> but once we remove the cowl uh, the compressive force is no longer there to hold it in place. So now I'm just slipping this off. It's really quite a tight tolerance. And now we're also able to remove the fuel delivery tubes. That's what they look like. Okay, just get this off. There we go. This is off now. And now we're able to get a good view of what this turbine casing, oh sorry, the bearing casing looks like. So this is simply bolted on to the diffuser with three M4 screws. However, I have drilled space for six, although they're not really needed. There's no real large forces here, but it's quite a rigid connection. In here, the bearing is seated, is seated into a machined um, shoulder of this aluminum, aluminum, um, aluminum casing. And this bearing isn't held here by this cowling here. So you see, this here is essentially a ferrule welded onto another um, like threaded end stop and with also several of the stator blades mount, uh, welded on. So this doesn't actually hold this bearing in place. This is just here to protect it from the exhaust gases. What holds it? Oh, oh shit. Phone just fell over. One second please. What actually holds this in place is Focus, please. Once the turbine is mounted on with the spacer, the appropriate spacer, turbine, and I'll just skip the washer. And once this screw is installed, not the screw, the nut is installed, this compresses and impinges onto this bearing, which holds it in place. Okay, well. It holds its position relative to the turbine fixed and what that allows us to do is have a look here it allows <clears throat> this turbine to seat in here with no transmission of force from the nut itself because you'll see here there's some um, there's just C clips here because at the time I hadn't thought of, I hadn't really considered that if this if this C clip wasn't here, then as this nut is tightened, the force, the axial force of the nut tightening onto the bearing will be transferred through the inner race, through the balls, and to the outer race, where the bearing would meet the inner machine surface, and. What that does is that drastically increases the friction on these bearings because 
the friction on them is proportional to the amount of axial force and it's a large proportionality because these are not deep groove bearings I believe it's just cheapo ceramic bearings and that's another note so I haven't really used um like just regular bearings because from all the other engines I've seen before those bearings require cooling active cooling with circulating oil and my design just doesn't accommodate for having oil circulate through the inside. This is not sealed in any way, shape or form. And so if I do attempt to flood it with coolant, such as oil, then it'll just leak out. Um, so it seems like the ceramic bearing has held up quite well, even after uh, facing exhausts of well over 400 degrees. Uh, probably more, since the exhaust gases will cool a bit as they exit the jet engine. So probably facing 600 degrees in here. And it seems to be okay. Although the manufacturer um, did give a spec of 400. Okay, so my phone's about to run out of battery once again, but let's give you a wide shot just to show all the components. So here is everything. Ah, this is taking quite a bit of work, and it still doesn't run.